everyone and welcome to the new year 2021. Really, really big hopes for this year uh, because for one, there are a lot of awesome space missions happening this year that we're gonna be going over in this video. Um, but first I want to share some really cool things with you guys. Like for instance, my Of Course I Still Love You landing pad t-shirt. Um, totally got that for Christmas and just wanted to really share that with you guys because I think it's super cool and I figured you guys would appreciate it too. So um, I actually just sent out an email transmission to all of my email subscribers for some astronomical events. I highlighted my favorite astronomical events, so the most luminous meteor showers and uh, the most prominent eclipses as well. Um, so I sent that out to all my subscribers and um, we'll be sending out, of course, those monthly transmissions if you guys are already subscribed on astroathens.com. You can head on there if you want to be getting some, you know, up to date, more detailed uh, astronomical events happening every single month, in addition to um, different things in space history. But what we're going to be talking about in this video are going to be some of the most exciting space missions that we have to look forward to for 2021. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my handy dandy laptop and jump on into this. So. Um, I was researching all of this. This actually was on uh, the MIT review. So um, airlock review, they have a ton of awesome, um, just different articles, write-ups, uh, just about the space industry and other industries as well, but I mainly pay attention to, to the space flights, um, the space industry. And there are some really exciting things happening this year for the new year. Um, so starting with February. So February, there are gonna be three missions arriving to Mars. So if you guys were around during the launch of Mars 2020 rover, so the Perseverance rover, that's going to be arriving in February. I am so excited for that um, because also on this mission is the Mars Ingenuity helicopter. The first time a helicopter is going to be arriving to Mars. So I'm really excited for that. In addition to that, these are going to be the first um, missions from um, China in addition to also the United Arab Emirates. So the UAE launched their Hope Orbiter, which is going to be arriving to, um, to Mars. And then there's also the Taiwan One mission, which is an orbiter, lander, and rover by China. The Hope mission is gonna be looking at at like atmosphere questions, um, such as why the planet hemorrhages hydrogen and oxygen. And the Taiwan One mission through China, as well as the Perseverance rover through NASA, is going to be looking at um, signs of past or present life. So that's really exciting as seeking to understand, understand more of the Martian geology. And again, like as I mentioned, this is a very really important thing when it comes to Mars because Mars has been a big target area um, for a very long time because Mars is, of all the other planets, the most similar to Earth when it comes to uh, the size, the distance from the sun. Um, it also has uh, similar elements that are found, carbon dioxide. It has a North Pole well, and South Pole region that have ice caps. And so um, there's a probability of being able to actually form uh, bases there, Martian bases, and to be able to start to have uh, people living there. So um, to actually work on these conditions, understand if there was life once there, um, or if there is currently life, still seeking for those answers, um, this is really important. So definitely looking forward to those missions. Um, and again, as I mentioned, this is the first time that China and the UAE are going to Mars and getting a close-up look at the planet. So that's really exciting. Then we move into March. March 29th is Boeing's second Starliner test. And Starliner is um, a really exciting mission. That's a joint mission to be going to the ISS. So in addition to SpaceX's Crew Dragon, which we just saw launch last year, we now have Boeing Starliner to look forward to, which is going to be launching to the ISS uh, later this year. And um, that, as, as I mentioned, um, is exciting because in addition to SpaceX's Crew Dragon, this is also a private company that is going to be working with uh, NASA and the International Space Station to launch astronauts there. And so um, that's going to be something to look forward to in addition to NASA's commercial lunar payload services. So CLPS, really fun acronym. Uh, which is actually a program to open up to small companies that are interested in having more of a presence on the moon, doing something with the moon, whether it's um, sending payloads to the moon or having satellites orbiting the moon or building your own lunar base. Um, NASA now has this program, the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program, where small companies and small businesses can actually take part in this, in this program. So um, this is definitely something exciting. It's to be part of the Artemis program, 
And, um, you know, as we may know, maybe you guys don't know, the Artemis program <clears throat> isn't only focused on sending humans to the moon, but actually focused on having humans permanently living on the moon. So that's something extremely ex um, exciting as well as important. And now moving from March into June, so we're gonna have that big break, uh, you know, during like the springtime and uh, early summer, where there aren't gonna be too many um, tests happening during that time, at least something, stuff that's been announced or recorded. But something um, in between that time to look forward to is anyone who's out in Texas, if you wanna head over to Boca Chica um, and see like what's happening with SpaceX's Starship uh, missions and test missions. They may be doing a surprise test flight sometime like this year that hasn't actually been announced just yet. Um, but you never know. If you guys want to see some water tanks lift off, uh, you head on over to uh, Boca Chica, Texas. I'm actually hoping to, to head out there myself to try and do some coverage. So definitely stay tuned. I will let you guys know if I get to go down there. So then we got June is the maiden launch of ULA's, so United Launch Alliance, Vulcan Centaur rocket. It's going to be carrying Astro Botic Technologies Perigene Lander. So Astrobotic Technology is a private company that is going to be launching a lander um, to the moon. And so this is part of what I just mentioned, I told you guys about for March, is um, the CLPS program. So that Commercial Lunar Payload Services program. And so this is one of the companies that are gonna be taking part in that. And they're gonna be launching their lander on this rocket, on United Launch Alliance's rocket, but also launching 28 more payloads, including 14 from NASA. And so if this is successful, this is going to end up being the first private spacecraft to successfully land on the moon. So again, if you know anyone out there, or if you're part of a company that might want to take part in um, something with the moon when it comes to either launching a payload, or if you have a lander, or if you want to work on a rover on the moon, um, now is your opportunity to work with the NASA's Artemis program in um, their CLPS program. So again, Commercial Lunar Payload Services program. And now looking into July, at the very end of July, July 30th, was supposed to be, and possibly will be, the end of the Juno mission. I love the Juno mission. I remember when it launched, um, Scott Bolton, uh, hearing him talk at the Intrepid Museum in New York City. So the Juno mission is what's at Jupiter right now. So it is that orbiter that has been analyzing close-up images of Jupiter, got some beautiful pictures like this one, taken of the atmosphere of those storms and cyclones happening on Jupiter. Um, and so it's supposed to be ending July 30th. However, there are some talks about uh, NASA possibly extending it to September of 2025, which would be really exciting. And the purpose to extend it would actually be to do some close-up flybys of the moons of Jupiter. That I think would be so, so awesome and exciting. So really fingers crossed that this mission will get extended to do some flybys of those moons because Although it's awesome to explore the planets in our, in our solar system, it's more than awesome, it's really exciting. The moons in our solar system are just as exciting. I think that that, is, that can just tell us so much more about um, possibly the habitability on, on moons when we're always looking for, for planets. Um, so now let's move into fall. So we've got quite a lot of things happening in October, starting with intuitive machines. They're going to be launching their Nova Sea lander to the moon on board a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, carrying at least five NASA payloads to the moon, along with other payloads from other groups. Now, Intuitive Machines um, launching their Nova Sea lander. This is, as I mentioned again, a private company that is taking part in, in having a, um, a place on the moon in, 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 in actually like aiding in scientific research um, and and yeah, having taking their own footsteps, I guess, kind of robotically uh, on the moon. And now there's more stuff happening in the moon in October. Does anyone remember the, the Russian lunar program? I'll give you guys a, a, a little moment right there. The name lunar is in, well, part, part of the name lunar is in the program name. Okay, if you guys wrote in the comments, if you guessed it, um, Luna, you are correct. The lunar program, Russian lunar program is relaunching. The last mission was the Luna 24 mission, which was back in 1976. Let me actually double check that. Yes, back in 1976. And now they've relaunched the program and they're gonna be launching Luna 25, which is gonna be a lander going to the lunar south pole. And so it's gonna be exploring new types of landing technology, which Russia is actually hoping will be successful because then they would use this technology, which hopefully we can learn more about once it launches, uh, for future robotic missions. 
Um, in addition to uh, also Luna 25 uh, containing a ton of scientific instruments to study the moon's soil. So that, that regolith, that lunar soil. And one more thing that's happening, two more things that are happening in October. The first time private citizens may be launching to the ISS to stay on for at least eight days. This is going to be a joint collaboration between SpaceX and Axiom Space. The program is called uh, SpaceX Axiom Space One. And so uh, that's what the mission is. And it may contain also Tom Cruise. He may be on, be on board with this. Um, but if this is a successful launch, um, if this is you know not going to be delayed, if it's really going to happen in October, it will be the first time that private citizens will be launching. And what I mean by private citizens is they're not um, uh, specifically NASA program or space program trained astronauts. Okay, they're, they're individual human beings that are don't work for uh, a space company or space program that are going to be trained and launched uh, to the ISS. So it's going to be through Axiom Space and SpaceX. And um, that's really exciting because <clears throat> like aside from having uh, research and scientists on the ISS, we're now looking at having more of a space tourism presence in space, which ties into some more things I'll get into in just a little bit. Uh, we're still working on October right now, but there are other programs that are looking to uh, really start to launch their space tourism uh, programs this year. Um, so without further ado, the final event of October is on Halloween, October 31st, which is the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, finally. Fingers crossed, because it might get delayed again. The reason I'm so excited about this telescope is because it's gonna be really peering into exoplanets and their atmospheres with its new infrared state-of-the-art technology going to be able to really look at the composition of uh, atmospheres around these exoplanets to then answer the questions, how habitable are these other worlds? And that's really important if we're trying to find life beyond Earth. Now we're moving into November, which is going to be the Artemis mission. I am so excited. Also super special to me. Love the name Artemis and it's launching my birthday month. Super excited about that. Artemis 1, an uncrewed Orion, is going to go on a 25 and a half day mission um, that's gonna be going to the moon for a few days and then bring and then coming back to Earth safe and sound, hopefully, fingers crossed. And Orion is going to be the space capsule that's gonna be on board the space launch system. So looking closer at the Orion capsule, um, this mission is specifically going to be testing out the Orion vehicle hardware, software, and the life support systems. Uh, it might actually even feature like two mannequins strapped into a pair of seats uh, fitted with sensors that will essentially gauge how much radiation uh, the crew inside the cabin might actually be exposed to during this type of trip. So uh, yeah, I guess I want to say kind of similar to Starman, except that Starman was on a red Tesla Roadster that was uh, extremely exposed to radiation and, because it wasn't in an, any type of enclosed place. It, although it did have its spacesuit, which was quite nice, but you know, still it, it, it's probably like burned up now by, by now out in space. Now this brings us into Virgin Orbit, which is the sister company of Virgin Galactic. And Virgin Orbit is looking to launch Launcher 1 successfully this year. Fingers crossed, they already have a ton of contracts lined up and different clients for the launch on Launcher 1. However, they haven't actually had a successful mission just yet. Now the way that they're gonna be launching their rocket into space is gonna be by using an aircraft, which will bring the rocket high up into the sky, um, high up into the atmosphere, and then it's going to uh, essentially separate from the rocket. The rocket's going to lift off out into space and then be able to insert well, the satellite or separate the satellite. The satellite will then insert into its orbit and the, the, the aircraft will be able to land back down on Earth and be reused. Now, again, as I mentioned, there hasn't actually been a successful flight of uh, Launcher 1, so we'll see how this goes. But this is something that Virgin Orbit is looking to achieve this year. Now moving into the final and most exciting things of 2021. They don't really have a, a timestamp right now, so they don't have a specific date of the year. However, one of them uh, is estimated to be around early 2021, so who knows really when, but it's a part of the Chinese space program. So this is the Tiangong program. It's continuing into its next phase. Tiangong is looking into developing an, a module orbital space station, about a fifth the size of the ISS. It's planning to launch the core service module called Tinahi in 2021. 
which is going to actually be the first of 11 missions to put together this entire space station, this orbiting space station, which will take over two years to fully contract the entire space station itself. When it's fully assembled, it's going to be able to fit a crew of three Taikonauts. Taikonaut is Chinese astronaut. And um, they're thinking of actually having the space station last for about, about 10 years in total. Now, last but certainly not least, Blue Origin. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I was saying how there's going to be new doors opening for uh, space tourism this year for 2021, and Blue Origin is the way to do it. Well, there's a few companies that are the way to do it, but Blue Origin is looking to do that as well. Blue Origin has two major goals for 2021. The first one is to launch people into suborbital flight on New Shepard. Now, New Shepard has already flown 13 times and has successfully proven that its booster is reusable by landing vertically, um, similar to how SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, uh, rocket booster lands vertically on, for instance, of course I still love you landing pad. Then Blue Origin has goals of launching New Glenn. And now New Glenn, although they have goals of launching in 2021, we haven't seen too much development in this rocket specifically. However, it's been acclaimed to be, once it's completely finished, to be the most powerful rocket. They're said to be more powerful than SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket. So that's gonna be a pretty exciting um, heavy payload rocket that's going to be launching once that actually goes under development. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what Blue Origin pulls together for that for the new year. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm super excited for what's going to be happening this year in, in space flight as well as in astronomical events. So definitely stay tuned. Again, as I mentioned, head to astroathens.com to find out um, just what's happening every single month astronomically. I'll be sending out monthly transmissions, any like last minute exciting things, the breaking news that comes out. I'll also be sending out an email for that too. Um, and I'll definitely let you guys know if I get to do any coverage of these launches. But I hope you guys get to get out. Hopefully, um, we'll be able to be out and traveling again and attending launches again. Fingers crossed for this year. But um, either way, there's a lot of exciting things that are happening. So um, I thank all of you guys for being here. Um, thank you so much. I hope that you guys had an extraordinary holiday season and are looking forward to exciting stuff in 2021 for space exploration. So once again, thanks so much for being here. If you guys wanted to um, help uh, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. If you wanted to uh, contribute to the show, you can head it over to Patreon. It's patreon.com slash AstroAthens. And um, yeah, maybe I'll connect with you guys on any other social platform. Um, I'm also on Instagram, TikTok. Uh, this is YouTube, Facebook, all of the above at AstroAthens. So I hope to see you guys in the future at Astra. Hope you all have clear skies. Bye guys.